Welcome to this 71st episode. I am super excited to be able to continue forward, to be able to uh, share more information with you. Thank you all for supporting me, and I look forward to uh, doing more with you. Uh, if you have, haven't have met me yet or you're new, please go ahead and like or subscribe, and let's enjoy this journey together. Today, I want to talk about disagreements and um, how disagreements often feel kind of yucky and talk about why that is and uh, tell you about how that can change. Children are great by their very nature and we have the privilege and responsibility of raising them. It can be challenging at times. Let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Cynthia Armstrong. I'm a general and a special education teacher. I homeschooled my children for five years. Um, I have worked with uh, so many children with behaviors, with families of children that can even have some extreme behaviors. Um, I work in a professional way with uh, younger children, uh, you know, kind of age eight and under and uh, outside in my community service and things. I've worked with children um, all the way into adulthood. And uh, this is one of my favorite things to do is to share what I've learned and help uh, parents to uh, kind of overcome or avoid some of those obstacles I ran smack dab into. <laughs> and one of those obstacles that I had were uh, disagreements. Like I did not like disagreements and um, that created a space for me where I was dealing with a lot of stuff internally and not actually um, resolving or um, moving forward. I would get very stuck and those emotions um, would just kind of roil around inside me because guess what? I did disagree with something uh, and I would not voice it. I would not share that because it felt yucky. Um, or I would wait till I explode to disagree with someone, to let them know I disagree. I would let it build up. And it wasn't until the volcano erupted that I would share, which um, just so you know, it's not the best way to get what I wanted. It wasn't <laughs> to resolve the situation and to do it with that unconditional love. And so let's talk about that a little bit because um, that is one of the things I hear a lot of that um, I don't like those disagreements. They feel yucky. I avoid them. Uh, and uh, in avoiding them, we create struggles uh, for ourselves and our children often pick up on those patterns. Um, they either take them in um, and, you know, tweak them to become even more so <laughs> for them, or um, they can go extreme um, the other way in avoiding what they see. Um, the more typical pattern is to pick it up though you'll have those few that go extreme the other way. Okay, disagreements. When we have a disagreement, um, we live in a world that has very conditional love. It's taught very conditional love. And a lot of people watch a lot of TVs, a lot of um, uh, shows and movies and uh, even though we know those are TV shows and movies, we still will um, begin subconsciously to um, kind of expect or promote those patterns of thinking, um, not super helpful. Uh, and we don't do it consciously, but it's kind of like subconscious programming. Uh, they do a lot of research for commercials, for movies to really 
try and uh, impact us because that's where they make their money. <laughs> and they do a pretty darn good job of it. Uh, and so when we see like even playing out on the TV shows, a way of reacting or responding to something um, over time, and especially the younger we watch, it, it um, really can create that sense um, of, oh, this is how I'm supposed to respond. This is um, an okay response. This is a, a typical normal response. And so then society tells us, oh, if somebody, um, you know, hurts our child, like another child hits our child, then it's okay to respond with uh, anger or grumpiness or to uh, judge the other parent who has this child uh, or to label this child that hit our child as mean or unsafe uh, or things like that. And we have... Um, this disagreement. So this disagreement is is could be between adults, uh, and that is a disagreement. We disagree with how this child um, behaved towards our child, <laughs> and so we have disagreements in kind of like all um, parts of our life. Uh, but it's how we handle that that uh, really makes that different. And in a world uh, where we grew up very rarely seeing unconditional love or maybe not seeing it at all, then a disagreement feels like uh, to many of us as a um, removal of, of love, uh, that we're not okay, that we're less, or we're being treated as less, and those other people... Um, are less now, right? They're unsafe. Um, they're not going to help us. Uh, they're going to make us feel stuck because then we won't be able to resolve the, the struggle. Um, there's a lot <laughs> that goes into that. And so what if, what if I could show you a way to change how you see those disagreements, to be able to uh, approach those agreements in unconditional love, in uh, a way that will actually help find solutions. Because a solution isn't, oh, I'm never going to go to that playground in case that other child is there. Or I'm just going to hold it all inside till I erupt. Or I'm just going to say it out there just any way I want because that's how I feel. And so I can just say it any way I want and let them know how I feel. Um, and those often don't bring us what we want. And so if it doesn't bring us uh, what we want, the interactions we want, the feelings that we want, why do we do it? And and it is a lot of times because of that unconscious programming. And yes, TV can be one, but our parents obviously are a huge one. And as parents, we're that huge one for our children. They are seeing us and they feel our energy. Even when we try and hide something, it still is part of our energy. And um, our children are really great at picking up on that, on knowing that even though mom is smiling, she's not happy. <laughs> even though dad said this was okay, he told me it was okay with a look that let me know, not really, or if you choose to do that, then there's going to be some judgment there. Uh, and so it gets really tricky. But what would that be like if you could learn uh, a pattern, a model, actually, I call it a model, a model for um, noticing your 
behaviors, your feelings, and being able to see um, why you're feeling that way um, and to be able to change it, to completely change it, not just so that you're uh, coping with a disagreement or coping with your feelings uh, or uh, just coping with the situation. Because coping, I've been there. It's not very fun. It may be better than suffering because underneath coping is suffering. But is that really all we want out of life is to be able to cope? Wouldn't we rather thrive to enjoy, to live to the fullest? That's uh, what I am doing. That's what I want for all those around me. Now that I've figured out how to experience that, because for, for a good portion of my life and for a, a large portion, portion of raising my children, I wasn't able to do that. I didn't understand uh, I, in school. Uh, I was working with, you know, um, behavior therapists. I was working with school psychologists to help students. I was going and seeing a psychologist myself, you know, just for my personal life. Uh, and they uh, were all into helping me cope because this is the, you know, what I had, you know, my anxiety, my depression, they like to label and then they work to help you cope with that label like that's who I am I am depressed I am anxious and we talk that way right it's just who we are so how can I cope with that but the model I teach um has no room for that there it doesn't make sense for that um uh, and when we go into like coping, when you use the model, you go in because coping lets you know, oh, there's something going on that um, I can change to create the life that I want. And so when you take whatever it is you're coping with, you stick it in the model and it comes out, you, you know, go through the, the model and out the other side, is, is a whole new life where coping doesn't even exist. But that life that you want is there, that you're creating. This model allows you to create that in a high rate, like amazing um, that people who have, who were like me, have gone to psychologists um, who take been on medications, who've uh, taken their child to every Thing they could possibly think of but when they find this model they go oh their OCD that was keeping them on the couch that was keeping them from school that was having them um, really freaking out at school their uh, whatever label they have wow it, it it's like I'm not sure why they labeled them because that's not a thing. That's not a thing for my child anymore uh, or for me anymore. Because guess what? If we learn this model to help our children, guess who else it helps? Yeah, <laughs> it does. Uh, so whether you want to learn the model to help yourself so you can help your child, or if your thinking is more, I need to help my child, then it's going to have that repercussion, that wanted repercussion of helping you as well. So um, please uh, reach out, contact me below, join me for one of my webinars uh, or my workshops, as I like to call them. <laughs> and uh, remember, children are great by their very natures. That also implies we are, by the way. And we have that privilege and that responsibility to raise our children. I will see you in another episode.
Hi friends, Cynthia Armstrong here. Thanks for joining us today. Please make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can see when new videos come out and like this one. It is such a responsibility and a challenge to raise great kids and we are here to help you along that journey to make it as enjoyable and fun and fulfilling as possible. Please check out our website, www.raisinggreatkids.net, and I will leave that in the description below.